The year is 2008. Gaming is in the middle of a massive evolution. The Xbox 360 and PS3 are the heavyweights of the console world, while PC gaming continues to push the boundaries. First-person shooters are dominating, with Call of Duty Modern Warfare leading the charge, setting a new standard for multiplayer titles. But in the midst of all of this, something different is on the horizon. Battlefield Bad Company, one of my absolute favorite games of all time. As it emerges, it introduces revolutionary concepts and features like destructible environments and a cast of characters that would break the mold for military shooters. Let's dive into the game that changed the Battlefield franchise. Before Bad Company, most FPS games had static environments where cover was permanent and the battlefield didn't evolve much, if at all, during combat. Bad Company introduced the Frostbite engine, which allowed for destructible environments. This meant players could blow huge holes through buildings. This feature added a new layer of strategy. Players could no longer hide behind the safety of a permanent cover without worrying about the possibility of it being blown apart by a tank or even a well-placed grenade. It encouraged more dynamic gameplay and forced players to adapt on the fly. The destructibility of the environment became a tactical weapon in itself. This was such a groundbreaking feature that it became a hallmark of the Battlefield series. Later games in the series expanded on this concept with more detailed and expansive destruction. The idea of Levolution in Battlefield 4 where massive map altering events like collapsing skyscrapers that could change the flow of battle was a direct evolution of this system. Bad Company was the first Battlefield game to focus heavily on storytelling in the single-player campaign. It introduced memorable characters, each with unique personalities, and featured a humorous and engaging plot that depicts a fictional conflict between the US and the Russian Federation. You play as Preston Marlowe, a new recruit assigned to B Company, a group of soldiers who have been sent to the front lines as expendable cannon fodder. They're given only the most dangerous missions with little expectation of survival. The campaign kicks off when tensions of the war are running high in Eastern Europe. What starts as a straightforward military mission quickly takes a turn when Marlo and his squad learn about a group of mercenaries known as the Legionnaires, a militia who are being paid in gold bars. Now this sparks a new motivation for the squad, the unabridged pursuit of gold. Within the first few minutes of the campaign, we are introduced to Sarge or Redford, a by-the-book squad leader who just wants to retire in peace. And then there's Haggard, the reckless demolitions expert with a southern drawl that makes his steady stream of hilarious one-liners all that much more hilarious. Lastly, there's Sweetwater, the tech-savvy voice of reason with a pretty hopeless infatuation for the squad's mission commander, Mike Wanjulia. I could make an entire video about the sheer brilliance of Bad Company's campaign and its secret sauce of unforgettable characters in particular, but what's most important though and what sets it apart from all the FPS campaigns at the time and frankly even from current titles is that it wasn't afraid to step away from the already established serious and grim war narrative. It embraced humor to no end, creating a far lighter, more irreverent tone. Each character's complex and wonderfully crafted personalities was what truly set it apart from its competitors. This emphasis on humor and character development showed through in future titles as well. While later titles moved away from the humorous, light-hearted tone in specific, the success of Bad Company's campaign paved the way for future installments of the franchise to experiment more with narrative depth and character focus. The introduction of Gold Rush mode marked a significant evolution in multiplayer shooters, setting the stage for what would become the iconic Rush mode in future titles. In this mode, attackers are tasked with securing a series of gold crates, while defenders attempt to seize their efforts. This dynamic creates an engaging tug of war that emphasizes teamwork, strategy, and coordination. The mode's success undoubtedly influenced the creation of other similar objective-based modes in not only Battlefield, but in games like Call of Duty and Overwatch. While previous Battlefield games were designed primarily for PC, Bad Company was built specifically with the console demographic in mind. This meant optimizing controls, gameplay, and performance for console hardware and player bases. Before Bad Company, large-scale multiplayer shooters like Battlefield were generally seen as a PC domain, where games could handle big maps, vehicles, and a large number of players. Bad Company showed that you could still have a robust, large-scaled multiplayer experience on consoles without sacrificing too much in terms of things like map size, vehicle combat, or player count. Bad Company's success on console paved the way for games like Battlefield 3 and 4, which became multi-platform blockbusters. It helped establish Battlefield as a leading franchise across both PC and console gaming. At the time, most military shooters took a very serious tone, focusing on the horrors of war and heroic sacrifice. Bad Company was one of the few to successfully blend humor with action. The characters were quirky and lighthearted, and the game wasn't afraid to poke fun at military tropes. Okay guys, back up! So you reckon that the rainbow sprinkles are the way forward with the donut? Absolutely, because then you get the different textures Shh. between soft donuts Could you do and get your ass over here right now. Hi, Mom. I'm coming live from the war in, um, 
What country am I in? His humorous approach set Bad Company apart from other games in the genre. It created a very unique identity and tone, making it memorable to players who were used to the grim seriousness of other FPS titles. It also made the game feel more accessible and fun even for players who weren't hardcore shooter fans. While later Battlefield games returned to a more serious tone, the success of Bad Company's lighthearted approach inspired other developers to experiment with humor in their games. Games like Far Cry 3 and Borderlands would later blend action with humor in a similar fashion. Bad Company initially allowed players to unlock new weapons through gameplay, with no option to purchase them via microtransactions. When DICE introduced microtransactions for certain unlockables, it sparked community backlash, eventually leading to the removal of the feature. This event foreshadowed future debates about microtransactions in gaming. The community's negative reaction to pay-to-win mechanics demonstrated that players valued and still do value fairness in progression systems, especially in competitive multiplayer games. The controversy over microtransactions in Bad Company was an early indicator of the broader industry's growing focus on monetization. It shaped discussions around in-game purchases in later games, and DICE's decision to remove microtransactions after receiving flack from the community showed that developers needed to balance player feedback with monetization strategies, and they still very much do. Thank you for joining me as we took a closer look at Battlefield Bad Company. I really enjoyed making this video, seeing as Bad Company is truly one of my favorite games of all time. It holds a really special place in my heart. Sadly, the multiplayer servers for both Bad Company titles were shut down, but I do often return to the campaign when I'm in need of a nostalgia hit. Let me know what you guys think. I know my opinion is most certainly biased, but I really have never understood why the Bad Company series is so underrated. I really do hope to see a third game in the future, as unrealistic as that wish probably is. Thank you again so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Hide my head, I wanna drown my sorrow. No tomorrow. No tomorrow, and I find it kind of funny, I find it kind of sad, the dreams in which I'm dying are the best I've ever had. Wait, shut up, shut up, shut up! Sorry. The dreams in which I'm dying are the best I've ever had. What does that mean? What does it mean? Yeah, well, it's a dream. It's How a about this song? Mama's little baby love shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby love shortening bread.